My name is Tara. Hi, I'm Reese. Hello, I'm Mason Figora. My name is Carter Salada. I'm Eba or Eba or Eba Alicia. My name is Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Tony. My name is uh, L Hanley. The L is short for uh, Eleanor. <laughs> to stay alive this feelings far too strong i know i'll stand tall even though i am small when i was younger i felt kind of weird about being a girl i never really like confronted it until not very long ago but i always felt weird about like my body and also I just felt like it was wrong when people referred to me as a girl. I kind of realized that I liked girls when I was 11, and I didn't really have a problem with it. I just never really wanted to think about it that in depth because I was afraid that people would judge me, and it took so long for me to come out to my friends. So I thought everyone would freak out, but they didn't, so it ended up being a more positive experience because now I'm more comfortable with myself. So. I guess I've always dealt with people being like, do you like anyone? Do you like anyone? Oh, is this your boyfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? And I was like, no. Nah. In terms of gender, I've been pretty fluid since middle school. <clears throat> I know I got called a girl a lot, or I got called, like, really wimpy a lot. But I kind of embraced it and kind of, like, you know, I kind of adopted it. And I felt all right with it. And other guys my age were like, dude, what are you doing? That's kind of weird, but... Um, I never really understood it until like high school, like about last year when um, I guess I just started um, going on social media noticing a lot more about LGBT stuff and then I educated myself and I finally understood what it meant. Well, back in elementary school I can remember myself being really, really shy and I was just trying to be really girly and be like what everyone wanted me to be, so I could be popular and stuff like that. But that never really worked out, and I was like a weird kid. I also hated jeans. I don't know why I feel I need to say that. But you know, I hated jeans. By by eighth grade, ninth grade, I'd kind of given up on the whole being popular thing and just kind of, you know, being myself, being me. Well, um, back in like eighth grade when I first figured out I was not the straight um i was kind of like really like awkward about it and was like i don't really want to tell people but um now i'm like kind of really open about it the elementary school and middle school were rough for me in terms of um that was when those gender roles really started hitting me um but once i got towards high school i started kind of being okay with myself and coming to terms with uh, different parts of my gender and a lot of my previous struggles made sense when I realized that those struggles existed because of like my gender dysphoria so that's basically my story and now it's been I've been like kind of open about being trans for about a year I've told a lot of people and now I'm more open about it like when I started having these feelings it wasn't as great because I didn't accept myself and I didn't love myself, but I am more okay with myself because of my reassured identity. There, there was one lesbian couple that lasted for like a day back in like 8th grade. <laughs> it's just sort of comforting to just sort of think that like, I'm not the only one that's kind of going through this sort of stuff.
they do, why are you even friends with them? When I learned a long time ago, you can't please everyone, so stop trying to. Don't fit into stereotypes because you think you should fit into stereotypes. Don't do things because you think people will like you for it, because they won't. You can't please everyone. You'll find people that you please just by being you. So, some advice for people that have non-binary and trans people in their life, I recommend that you support them. Like, you show that you support them. You try your hardest to use the right names, the right pronouns that they ask for. Because what transgender people, like, queer people in general need is support. They need that support system for when they encounter other people that do not support them. It's one of the most important things that you can have. Even though I had some friends be very critical, um, I definitely moved on, looked past that, and um, just try and prove to myself and anybody else that just because I'm different doesn't mean I deserve anything lesser or I deserve anything more. And not everything has to be a switch, not everything has to be boom. Like, I'm like a woman now, this is my second coming out, like, all that, you know, uh, kind of call me Caitlyn, Vanity Fair cover, that stuff's great, but it's not a reality for most people. And I think being forced into that is very uh, constricting, it actually causes more problems for people who can't just have that switch, and it's a long process. I distinctly remember a girl saying, my parents don't let me say the word gay. I think it was really lucky because I see a lot of people struggling with um, parents that are very strict and very traditional and to the book stuff. Um, and I guess I was lucky that my parents were the most understanding that they could be. Like, the internet really influenced how I felt about my identity because I was learning all these new terms. And so I could describe myself better. I could put how I felt into words finally, whereas before I couldn't. So the internet really helped me. Before, like maybe last year, I wouldn't have even known what bisexual was. There are a ton of terms that I didn't even like know about when I first started questioning my identity. I knew about like gay, straight, and bi. That was about it. <laughs> um, but if you're even questioning, like, whatever it is you're questioning, like, do your research on absolutely everything, because you might actually be surprised at, at what you might learn about yourself, just, just from all the terms um, and definitions that are out there that are used by other people. For a while, I did feel like, oh, you know, I'm just, there is nobody, like, there is nobody like me, but, like, nobody like me that can, uh, that can somewhat relate to me. And it's like, oh, I found these people, they can relate to me. It gave me some sort of place in this world that for a while I just have not felt like I've ever had. What was the question again? Something that was really important for me was realizing the, realizing the difference between comfort and safety. And unfortunately, safety comes first. And so you just need to find small groups of people who you can feel comfortable with that can ground you. And then in those circumstances where you're kind of forced to uh, restrict yourself or hide parts of yourself, it's easier because you know you have something to fall back on. So. I, for the most part, wear pretty masculine clothes because that's what makes me feel safe, even if that's not what makes me feel comfortable. For queer people and straight people alike, be yourself, but be respectful. Be respectful, responsible, and safe. I don't know why we have to ostracize ourselves. I think we're all human beings and we're all somewhere on a scale of sexuality and gender, and I think it's time that people realize, hey, these are people too. Let's treat them like they're people. If you don't agree with, with the way that I want to live my life, then don't live the way I live my life. 
and you don't have to love everybody. You don't. But don't don't hate on people. Don't try to keep them from living their life because you would be just as upset as, as they are if someone told you you couldn't you couldn't marry the person that you loved or you couldn't do the things that, that you want to do just because somebody else doesn't doesn't agree with it. It's a journey finding out who you are. So like take your time. It's okay. Just be yourself. Don't conform to what other people think. I would say don't trap yourself into thinking that you have to be a certain way just because you identify a certain way. You know, don't focus on the physical things. Don't focus on the things you can hear. Focus on somebody's mannerism. I don't know. It's just start existing in your own little bubble, I think. And allow people into that bubble when you want to, but don't allow people into that bubble who are gonna hurt you. I know that like a lot of people like shame LGBT, LGBT people for like being special snowflakes, but honestly I've understood like, you know, I'm not a special snowflake. I identify as this and my sexuality is this. I don't deserve anything more or less from other people, so I'm equal. There's nobody above me or below me, and there's no reason anybody should be above me or below me. And I know who I am, and I'm okay with that. And if you think I'm different, that's okay. And if you think I'm one way, that's fine. Because I'm fine with myself, which is why I think it's important. Honey, be yourself. Ain't nobody gonna do it better than you. And love yourself, because if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? You know, if a hundred years from now, you see this video on a futuristic YouTube or whatever, I don't know where this is going, <laughs> and, you know, you're questioning yourself and things are still like, oh, the K's are bad, um, just know that there was somebody a hundred years before your time that loved you.